one of the aspects at Emory that as a community we feel really good about, despite the fact that it sometimes makes us feel really bad, is that we have difficult conversations. Difficult conversations are conversations about topics that don't necessarily come up, or topics where people don't want to listen to each other, or people want to demonstrate that their way of looking at it is really the best and only way to look at something. As we have been having difficult conversations, we also realized, and I truly mean the we, collectively, that once you have even a diverse community as Emory talking about difficult topics, you still live within a bubble and you don't get the full sense of what the rest of the world thinks. So with tremendous support, we decided to launch conversations with America as difficult conversations to understand what does the rest of the world think and how do we align with that. These conversations have helped us not only to understand how we don't have as complete a perspective as we think we do. One of the features of universities is we're all smart people, we know how to look at evidence, we know what questions to ask, we can debate, and at the end of the day we know what the answers are. That's not the case. We are very fortunate that Peter Hart, who is with NBC and the Wall Street Journal, has agreed to go into the country and have focus groups with random people to get an understanding of what people think. And that has been incredibly impactful because the topics that have come up have ranged from the presidential elections and the outcome, because that's when we first started having these conversations, to issues around migration and immigration issues around health and health issues, the emerging opioid epidemic, and closer to home, the value of higher education and the way in which people think about that today. There's such a polarization that people don't even want to listen to each other anymore. And what that does is then you only listen to people who agree with you and the rest of the people are ignored. And before you know it, we have thousands of choirs as opposed to one choir. And for us to be good, we need to have one choir where people at least listen to each other. So there is tremendous value short term by recognizing that that's the case and sorting through what does this mean for our students? What does it mean when I say, I know this for sure? What evidence do you have? Is it emotional or is there something that's more grounded in what you would expect as a college student we're trying to teach you here? So there is an impact not just about learning about the topic at that point in time, but also learning about, so how do I interact with people that think differently than I do? What do I learn about myself in that process? How do I need to change? Maybe I'm the narrow-minded one. Where is the common ground? Now that's very important, but it also will help long-term because it means that we will have students that will go out in the world who are trained to think that way. And that means that we together will start looking for solutions. And that's what we need so much in the world nowadays. We have problems, we talk about the problems, we've almost lost the desire or become hopeless about finding solutions. And difficult conversations will get us there.